<laughs> this just in for the Not News Network. The FDA is now banning beating up elderly in assisted living. Oh, wait, no. What? Assisting. Assist, uh, popping the cis of the queen. Oh, no. Wait, what? An acetyl cis in the seas? An acetyl cis? And, oh, FDA is now banning an acetyl cysteine. An acetyl cysteine? The supplement? They're building the, the, the supplement? What? It's a supplement. Like what? Two people die, a year die of supplements? That's fine. Shark attacks and vending machines. Where people choke on hot dogs. What are we going to do? Yeah, we're going to ban hot dogs. Banning hot dogs and vending machines would not be a bad idea, but I don't, what are we going to do? Ban sharks? This is ridiculous. I'm out. What's going on, guys? Dr. Mo here bringing you tips to be Mo healthy, wealthy, and wise. If you're into that kind of thing, sit back, relax, hit that subscribe button. Today, I want to break down the NAC situation. Amazon's been pulling down some of its NAC. The FDA has issued some statements, so I want to talk about what is NAC, why is it beneficial, and where you can still get it. Uh, my full script's been blowing up with orders of NAC. You can still get NAC through professional websites like Fullscript. Fullscript is what I use with all my patients. It's where I send all my friends. I am an affiliate. I do have a referral link below where you can still get NAC. We don't really know for how long, if they're going to pull it down. Why I like Fullscript is because they do third-party testing and they pretty much comb through all the supplements that come through. Amazon and a lot of the other major supplement stores basically just throw anything out there. You know, really, I could order stuff on full script, empty out the bottle, put it in rice powder, and then sell it on Amazon. And I have heard of people doing that. It, there, was a, there was a documentary that came out, Bigger, Faster, Stronger, where they showed actually how easy it is to make a supplement. So I can, I do kind of understand why the FDA is coming in and wanting to place some play some regulations. So I want to talk a little bit more about that. So a way that you can support the channel is by purchasing NAC on full script. I do have a referral link below as I am an affiliate with them. So jump on full script. You can get a bunch of other supplements that I'm going to talk about as well. So why, what's with the FDA going after NAC? Well, you know, their job is safety supposedly. And they, I don't know, I guess they've deemed it not, they, like anything that comes out, the FDA has to look at it and say it's safe before they allow it to, to market. What's tough is when you get into supplements and, and natural places. So I get that. And I think what the big uproar that started is that people use NAC as a hangover cure, like IV places. And, you know, it's not really regulated like a drug. So the FDA and most government institutions are always going to be a little more conservative in that area. So that's why the FDA went after a couple places, a couple supplement companies, some doctors, and now everyone's kind of retracting it away from NAC. Uh, before that happens, though, I want to talk about what NAC is and why it's great because NAC is the backbone of glutathione, and glutathione is the body's main antioxidant. What does that mean? What's an antioxidant? Well, it's the opposite of a pro-oxidant. Uh, oxygen has a high, is highly electronegative, meaning that it basically goes around your body and can, in high amounts, tears down your cell walls and creates oxidative damage is what we call. So basically imagine someone without an arm going around and just ripping off an arm of everyone else and replacing theirs. Uh, glutathione is, is something that can give an arm to that person missing an arm and then that person's fine and they're not going around trying to steal everything else. So glutathione is super important for pretty much everything in the body. There's really not, anytime you're thinking antioxidants, we're thinking glutathione. So whether it's protecting your neurons, it's helping your immune system. And in particular, it's really big in what's called phase two detox. So your liver has phase one and phase two. Phase one is when it takes stuff like caffeine and alcohol, and it turns it into less toxic substances. And then phase two, which is conjugation, that's where glutathione comes in and, and basically binds onto or tears these things down and then it allows you to excrete it through. So what depletes glutathione? Well, anything that causes stress on the body. Main ones, I would say lack of sleep, alcohol, other drugs, and overexercising can actually deplete glutathione as well. What are common doses? I would say 600 milligrams once a day. Some people go as high as 1,800 milligrams. Uh, when I'm trying to boost my immune system or I'm traveling, I'll do 600 milligrams once or twice a day. Again, not medical advice, just for, this is for information purposes only. 
Are there any contraindications or side effects? I mean, any supplement you can get, you can go anaphylactic. You can have an allergic reaction. It's like with anything, food, whatever. Uh, what is interesting, the sulfa allergy one is a highly debated area of NAC and glutathione. So maybe easier for people just to stay away. And NAC can smell a little funky. Some people like eggs. So I don't know if that's really side effect or contraindication. Maybe you don't like eggs. Um, and kind of like I said before, what other supplements can you take? Uh, well, selenium and riboflavin are both part of the oxidation and reduction of glutathione. Basically, mean they help it recycle. So B2 and selenium are two great supplements that help your body uh, recreate and use glutathione. B6, B12, uh, with B12, always try and get a methylated form of that. Vitamin C, another antioxidant, is kind of glutathione's buddy. Now, uh, glutathione is made, made up of several amino acids, so supplementing with those amino acids has been shown to actually help raise glutathione levels. That's why protein supplements, things like whey protein, uh, can often help raise glutathione levels. So methionine, glutamine, glycine are all great. And then I would say the big herb out there is the milk thistle. Most of you people who are in the natural world have heard of milk thistle and how great it is for the liver and detox. So, you know, I think a lot of people are thinking, well, why, why do I take NAC instead of just taking glutathione? Well, the problem with glutathione is you have a high, high amount of acidity in your stomach. And when you take glutathione orally, the acidity will really break down most of the glutathione. You'll still be left with the precursors to glutathione. It's kind of like taking a house and then pulling it all apart and then putting it together again later. Uh, but you can also take NAC, which is like pure lumber for the house. So you can just take the NAC and it's just, it's a little bit easier on the body. Uh, you can do it IV. I've used that a lot in my patients. I think it's great. Uh, it's been shown to have a lot of benefits as far as neurodegenerative diseases, immune system dysfunction, and just everyday wear and tear and aging. So and I, I, I just included a little picture here of glutathione and how it uses and, and how it neutralizes hydrogen peroxide and alcohols throughout the body. So glutathione is really cool. If you haven't heard about it before, uh, I'm hoping that this informed you a little bit here today. So if this is stuff you like, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, stick around a little bit. And until next time, God bless.